Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We talk all the greatest basketball news. I am here in sunny California, uh, where we actually just had a uh, kind of a big earthquake the other day and uh, a little tumbler. You know, we always like to talk about uh, earthquakes here in California. It's been hot. It's been uh, it's been nice. You know, it's shorts and sandals weather. Uh, but let's get into this basketball. Uh, I'm back to talk a little bit more basketball, and we've got the end of March Madness, and it was a fun one, ladies and gentlemen. On the on the gentleman side and on the lady side, it was a hell of a run. We've got a lot of basketball, NBA basketball to get to. We've got uh, some more injuries. Uh, we've got some more waiver wire pickups. Uh, so it's it's a, it's a good time uh, to talk basketball. But let's get into this uh, men's and women's championship. I want to dive into the men's one. Uh, Obviously, Baylor beat Gonzaga, and I've told you guys for the last couple weeks, Gonzaga's my team, Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Gonzaga. And, you know, they played against UCLA the other night, and I was turning on the game, and I was like, whoa, UCLA's in this game. And I turned off, you know, I was watching the game, watching the game. UCLA gave them a run for their money. UCLA is a hell of a basketball team, guys. Uh, they were underrated all tournament, and we didn't know how good they were. But they played a hell of a game. They kind of slowed them down a little bit, and they took it down to the wire. And if it wasn't for Suggs making that shot, Gonzaga would have been toast. They would have. They wouldn't even been there. And then in the other game, Baylor crushed Houston. Uh, Baylor guys were, was the best team in the country. Uh, after seeing that last night, it looked like they were on different, like, levels of, like, greatness. Baylor was all over the floor. I I, I don't even know if Gonzaga got on the bus. Gonzaga looked a, a couple steps slow. They, I don't think they got the memo that it was a national championship game. Because if you looked at their body language, their tempo, like, they just seemed flat. Timmy looked out of the game. Suggs was trying to find some energy. Uh, they were just out of the game. Like, it didn't seem like they were ready to play. And, you know, they go undefeated all year, and this is a game where you kind of, you know, you kind of poop the bed, I want to say, the nicest way possible. Kisper, 5 for 12, for all first team All American. Timmy, 5 for 7, 7 shots. Man, Suggs, 8 for 15. He had a solid game, 22 points. But this Baylor team, though, deserves all the credit in the world. Uh, The coach, when he first got hired a a long time ago, was kind of like, you know, we're we're here to win championships. And everyone kind of thought of him as a fool. Everyone kind of thought of him like, what is this guy talking about? But he's built a hell of a basketball team. And my favorite player this tournament was Mitchell. He, you know, he looks a lot like Donovan Mitchell. He wears number 45 as well. Uh, but if you watch that kid play, he's never out of a play, and he's so shifty. He's one of those kids that might end up being a better pro than college basketball guy, than, than college basketball player. And I always talk about guys, uh, whatever team has the most professionals is usually going to win, uh, better shooters. And this kid, at the next level, his game translates. Being a defender, uh, being able to score, he looks like he's a natural-born leader. He lo- he seems like a team guy first. And 
he 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 could play. Butler four threes, twenty two points. Vital. So so I was I was watching this game. I was taking notes, and I was like, "Did you guys happen to see Gonzaga win any loose balls? Literally, did they win one loose ball? They didn't. Baylor was the first on the ground, first to tie people up, uh, all over the glass. Vitel came in, had eight offensive rebounds. He had eight offensive rebounds, and you don't you can't coach that. That's kind of just like on the will of a player. He's six five. He's a big kid. Like you know, he's he's a little bit wider, but he's six five. Timmy six. What? How how tall is Timmy? He's close to being a seven footer. Yeah, Timmy's six ten. Timmy looks showed. I hate. I don't want to say this on here, but he looked like a liability last night. He didn't look like that player that we were seeing. The energy shown off the stash. He looked like any of that. Gonzaga looked flat. Baylor had you know poking balls away, uh, getting in passing lanes, uh, blocking shots. There was a there was a video going viral, and if you haven't seen it yet, please go watch it. Uh, there's a Baylor player that uh, gets a deflection, saves, throws it back. Uh, he's probably ten feet past the court. He has to maneuver his way back onto the court, then runs to the other side of the court to contest a three ball. The guy misses and he gets a rebound. Baylor wanted to win. And in college basketball, sometimes the team that wants to the team that wants it a little bit more, just because talent wise, sometimes, you know, isn't always there. They're not as talented as the NBA guys. But if you hustle in college basketball, you have a pretty good chance of winning the ball game. Because you get offensive rebounds, high percentage putbacks, uh, get in transition, you run and steals, layups, right? It's layups, it's e- high transition, uh, easy buckets. And that's what Baylor was doing. Yeah, they hit some three balls. They, were, they weren't they were great, they were 10 for 23. But they were just in transition, they were, 83, they were 88% from the field. Free throws, I'm sorry. 16 of 18 free throws, 40, 44% from the field. But Gonzaga, like, they cut it to nine in the second half. And I was texting some friends, and I was like, you know, if Gonzaga cuts it to eight, I, my magic numbers in college basketball are always eight to 12. Those numbers I always are my markers, eight to 12. You cut into there, you have a chance. Uh, and I said, so I tweeted out, you know, my, you know, if Gonzaga closes, they, there was a TV timeout about four minutes left. And I said, Gonzaga makes wins these last four minutes, they're going to have a shot. And they did. They won the last four minutes. They go into the half down 10. You know, down 10, you're in striking distance. Because at one point, they were down by 16, 17 points, I want to say. Uh, and, it, well, the game started at 9-0, 9-0, nine, nine, nine you know? And then I'm like, okay, okay, this is going to get bad. Uh, then it was 11-1, and I was like, oh, my God, what's going on, Gonzaga? Like, let's have a... Then 16-4, and then I'm like, okay, come on, wake up. 21-8, to eight, it ended up being, like... 21 to 6 at one point, obviously. And then, so then we, I said, okay, four minute mark, you know, they, they need, they need to get going. They, this is where they kind of break into the lead. Cause I'm a firm believer that you win games to start starting quarters and ending quarters. That's, you know, I'm a firm believer in that La- first three minutes, first, uh, last four minutes or last 30 minutes. I'm sorry. And Gonzaga did do that. They did. They won the last, they, they won the last four minutes and I was like, okay, they have a shot. Like I said, going in the half, 10 points. And then all of a sudden, they come out in the second half, and they're down 14. And they just weren't, it was loose balls, though. It was, the guys weren't playing hard. And they cut it down to nine at one point. And then it was, they had a five-point swing where uh, Vital had a block, and then he, they turned it into a three. And guys, Gonzaga didn't come to play, though. And they were searching for energy all day. Uh, but this Mitchell kid, guys, I love his game. Absolutely love his game. Love his game. I, no and if or buts. Uh, such a good ball player. 
And the difference was, you know, Gonzaga couldn't really buy a three either. They were five for 17 from three, 29%. You're not going to win many ball games doing that. Um, Baylor hit five more at 10. Uh, free throw line. Again, Gonzaga's bad. 15 for 21. You got to make the free ones. Uh, offensive rebounds, they killed them on the glass. But this is all just effort, guys. Like, boxing out. So I'm a firm believer in defense being all heart like all obviously you could teach some defensive uh fundamentals you know slide your feet uh you know getting good positions anticipation but a lot of it at the end of the day comes down to how much heart how much do you want to win and Baylor had all that plus more and their big guys got in foul trouble with four and like I said Vital came in the game and just dominated 38 rebounds to Gonzaga's 22 rebounds offensively 16 to 5 Baylor uh, defensive rebounds twenty two to seventeen. Baylor, uh, they led in all eight to four in steals, five blocks. Uh, Gonzaga had fourteen turnovers. Uh, at one point they were out by twenty. They were just playing harder. Like I could, I could give you all these numbers and I could tell you like Gonzaga's got all this talent, but at the end of the day, if you don't have like any heart. Like, they, they they looked out of it. Gonzaga did not look like they were ready to play a national championship game. And maybe that maybe that UCLA game was kind of like an eye-opener to them or that was like, uh, maybe, hey, like, we are beatable. And I still thought, personally, I thought, hey, UCLA being there was like a fluke. But UCLA is a good ball club. UCLA, Cronin could coach. But when I saw that, when I saw that happen, I was like, oh, man, Gonzaga looks very... Very, very beatable. Like, like UCLA. I think Baylor watched that game against UCLA and was like, "Oh, these guys. Are, we have these guys on the ropes." But give the coach credit, man. Uh, Baylor. They had a two week pause because of COVID, and they came back. They still played hard. Uh, they were good all tournament. They were. <laughs> Great all tournament. I thought that Houston team was a hell of a ball club. Man, was I mistaken. Like, that was a good basketball team. I personally thought. You know, in uh, their road to the post, I mean, it wasn't easy. They beat the uh, the, fifth, the 16th seed, obviously. They won 79 of 55. Then they played Wisconsin, a good Wisconsin team, I thought. Uh, 76 of 50, 63. Uh, Villanova, another good basketball team, sixty-two to fifty-one. Uh, Arkansas, uh, you guys know how I love, I love, I loved Arkansas this year, eighty-one to seventy-two. Arkansas, I thought was a lot like Baylor in the sense that very scrappy team. You know, they beat you with their motor. Uh, they beat you just off pure hustle, and that's what I thought Arkansas was. And you know, they came up short. And then Houston, I thought was a suffocating basketball team. They're so long and. Baylor didn't have a problem with them at all. They put them put them to bed early. Uh, credit to him. And then they came back. Coach Scott Drew, guys, like say whatever you want. He deserves the majority of the credit. Obviously, the players out there, Mitchell, who I love, Butler, who is a great player, Vitell, the big guys. They just they they just all play with a ton of heart. And I can't and I keep stressing that, but that's what I get from them. The heart, you know. Uh, and then at Gonzaga, they obviously kicked their butt at the end. That wasn't even a game, guys. And they they lost to Oklahoma State, who I thought you know was a good ball club. Uh, Cunningham in the regular season, um, he's a pro. He, he's going to be, but man, that's that's that, that's a hell of a ball club, guys. Um, hell of a team, you know. Gonzaga, Gonzaga's going to be good, but. Oh man, the un, you know you hate for I like Mark Few and I thought they were they were my team to beat. I lost my bracket because of them. I was came down to the wire. The guy that beat me had the Baylor Bears. Uh, man, good game though. Not a good game. I and it's not wasn't a good game. It was honestly a terrible game to be honest with you. It wasn't a very good game. It was a good game in the sense that Baylor just kicked their butts. Like, man. Bailey, you deserve it. That was a good, good ball game, man. I, it was nothing more I could say about, but you know, Bailey just showing up and just old fashioned. Let me kick your butt. That's basically what it was, you know. 
That's that, uh, and that's what it was. Uh, then we had the women's game, Stanford against Arizona. Pac-12, please stand up. Pac-12 is the biggest winner in this postseason. Uh, March Madness of when, women and men. I've I had a whole segment on it. You know, a lot of people don't watch the Pac-12 because they're sleeping. Um, but they're the biggest winners, I personally think. Men's and women's. Uh, the men's guys, Oregon State, uh, Oregon, USC, UCLA, uh, Oregon State. Just good, good basketball. Good basketball being played on the West Coast. And then so the women's game, uh, I was rooting for Arizona. I love their coach. I love how much heart she had for her team. I love it. Uh, but, you know, Sanford started off a little bit slow. and then uh, Or Arizona, I'm sorry, started off a little bit slow. Uh, then their defense came alive. At the end of the first, you know, they came alive and they kind of got back into the game. McDonald started off a little bit slow. Uh, did that come back and hurt him? Maybe a little bit. And then that final shot, she had somebody open white. You know, you never want to turn your body to the basket with that much time left. But, you know, she had a slow night. She was 5 for 21 from the field and uh, 22. She still ended up with 22 points. But just not enough to be uh, this well-coached Stanford team. Stanford, you know, they're always there, 31 and 20, 31 and 2. Uh, but Arizona, I want to talk a little bit about Arizona just cause they're, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, let's just say I, you know, I like the grinders. I like the coaches that kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, I, I do, uh, coach Ida Barnes. She, she had, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this here in a second. Uh, she had a, a, a moment before they, after they beat UConn that I want to talk about here in a second. They went through a tough stretch as well. They beat Stony Brook, BYU, Texas A&M, uh, Indiana, and then obviously they beat UConn. Not an easy team to beat. Uh, but yeah, Stanford, they just came up a little bit short. Uh, they want their respect, and then Stanford just dominated, I think. Stanford was, like I said, Stanford is like a well-oiled machine. They're always good. Uh, they always play hard. They were up 16 to, 16 to 8 after the first quarter, and then it was kind of just maintaining at that point. Uh, they're good defensively. Uh, they they beat them in assist, you know, fifteen to five. Uh, they had they they out rebounded them by crazy forty seven to twenty nine. Nine offensive rebounds, uh, assists. They beat them, like I said. Uh, Arizona had a little more steals, just because I think they're a feistier team. I thought uh, I said that they kind of take after their coach. Uh, Twelve steals. Uh, Sanford, Sanford, all the re, but the biggest reason why I think Arizona was in this game, obviously with all due respect, I think they're a great ball club, but their turnovers, Sanford turned the ball over 21 times. That's a lot of turnovers in any type of game. Uh, but yeah, Arizona. And I want to talk a little bit about this coach and I, I'll dive into a little bit more. Uh, the coach kind of had a, a moment there where after the win against, uh, UConn, where she kind of flicked off. I think she was saying F everyone. Uh, this is our team. That's kind of what I think she was going for. And she got a lot of controversy for that. And I hate that. I absolutely hate that. How do you have controversy over that? She's firing up a ball club that, that in a sense, shouldn't be there. They believed in themselves. They rallied around their coach a good year. And she's getting her players to buy in. And they did buy in. So really, f everybody else because they didn't believe in you, and who? And some people are saying, "Hey, save that for the locker room, save that for you know another time." Why? That's how you feel. Anybody who has a problem with that, and, and I'm tapping my arm right now against my head, armrest. Anybody who has a problem with that has not played sports. You just haven't had any sort of competition in your life where you're just like, like I love this. The, the amount of adrenaline and the amount of, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's like a rush you get. You just beat the number one team. You just beat UConn. You just beat Gino R.E.M., a, a walking legend. A guy who, first ballot Hall of Famer. The, guy, the guy's everything. UConn, the best program in probably in women's history, right? You just beat her. You were underdog. No one had you. So, yes, it's okay to be that way. Why are we Why are we knocking them? Why did you have to apologize? That bothers me so much. They just beat UConn. And you guys are over here telling her to apologize? Obviously, they fell short against Stanford, and that's unfortunate. They had a hell of a run. Like, 
What even an knocker for? Don't, don't fire up your ball club. You have no idea how you uh, uh, that feeling of winning on on the biggest stage, and you're going to tell her to apologize. You've never been there. And it's okay if she hasn't been there. Even if you've been there, it's okay to be that way. It's okay to show a little bit of emotion. Why is it now we can't show emotion? In sports, it's the most emotional thing. The the thing that your body, your mind goes through in a basketball game and any type of sport just in general. And we're trying to knock her? Come on. All power to you, Coach Barnes. I love it. I love that. And I'm going to be looking out for them next year. Man, get me fired up, why don't you? Heapers. Come on, we've got so much to get it back. We have so much to get to to the show. Uh, we've got some NBA talks. Roy Williams is out. Uh, James Harden is hurt. We'll talk about that. Uh, stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the show. Um, where we talked about uh, the March Madness here. Uh, it's come to an end. I'm going to go over my bracket, see how I did. I didn't do too hot. Just a heads up, it's a first year I don't win in three years. Um, that was a tough one for me. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Roy Williams. We're going to talk about James Harden's injury, what that does to the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, talk about a little bit about Coach Roy Williams. But first... I kind of want to piggyback off what I just talked about in my last segment, the Coach Barnes, uh, how people want her to apologize. I'm still a little, like, my, 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 my feathers are a little ruffled, to be honest with you. So, what's your argument for a lady being fired up or a coach being fired up to get her team to buy in? They've obviously bought into her. They love her. They just beat UConn. And you, the, some people are telling me, oh, yeah, act like you've been there. Well, they haven't, first off. And second off, if you're a young recruit and you see that, you see that in a coach, right? You, you see a coach doing that. And then her team gets jacked. I want to play for her. Hey, Coach Jones or Coach Barnes, recruit me. I'll go there. I'll go there. Are you kidding me? If a coach has that much fire, and you know, there's obviously some coaches that are just more, a little more mild mannered, and so there's some that are fired up. And she's fired up. Her team just beat UConn. They're going to the championship. And yeah, they lost. They weren't supposed to be there. Right? They, for, for Christ's sake, they didn't even put their, uh, their, uh, their, their university in the promo video. That, and, and that might be who she was, uh, you know, sending that middle finger to. I don't know. Could have been, right? We'll never know. But it's I'm okay for her to be fired up. I really am. They didn't have them in the video. They just beat UConn. And if I'm, like I said, if I'm a girl that's getting recruited by Arizona and I see that, I am going to Arizona. No Andy for butts. If my coach is that fired up to do that, Oh, man. You better believe I'm diving all over the floor for the loose balls. You better believe I'm running through a wall for that coach. So get off of her. Get off of her. I don't want to see any more apologies. What are we apologizing for? It's sports. It's passion. It's love. I'm tired of this apology stuff. 
for something that's betterment of the team. It, it fires me up, man. It, it really does. It fires me up. And I don't like it. Man, I, and I see these people. Oh, man. I don't, and I don't want to get into it too much about people being softer, you know. But it is a little soft. It is. It is. Oh, that, I, let me, I got that off of me. So now let's... Uh, let me get on with my show. Uh, Coach Roy Williams decided to retire uh, for good. Uh, he said, and I, and the quote was interesting. He said, I think I'm not the coach. I'm not fit to be the coach of the University of North Carolina. What does that mean? What does that mean? I think it means that, you know, he doesn't feel like he could do it anymore. He could win at a high level. Sometimes coaches have different... Levels for their uh, their status. You know, Roy Williams, one of the best ever. Great, one of the greatest ever. You know, him, Coach K, Bayheim, uh, some of the greatest. Right? He spent eighteen years here, four hundred and eighty-five wins, one hundred and sixty-three losses. National championships in two thousand five, two thousand nine, and twenty seventeen. And before that, he coached at Kansas for fifteen years, taking them to the Final Four. He started off as like he asked to be uh take stats as a young kid when he was in the university. Really, he just wanted to be around the game. Ended up being one of the greatest ever. He's a fired up guy. He just wanted to be a coach. Loved it. Coach K said he was surprised, uh, but sometimes you know his health sometimes always wasn't there. Right, he had a couple scares, and. Obviously, the next coach, but I, I want I, the reason I would want to talk about Coach Roy Williams is because I applaud him for that. And you, I, and obviously he's saying he might be just be. I don't know, but I'm gonna say what he said. I'm not fit for the job. Whether it's health, I don't know. He didn't say any of that, right? But I feel like more coaches should do that instead of being fired. Like obviously North Carolina, you know they they were had a solid run this year, but like, would you rather him be fired, right? Instead of him stepping away and kind of being like, you know, I don't feel like it's right. Sometimes some of these great coaches, sometimes they overstay their stays. And it's and it's one of those things that like a program or a team doesn't want to get rid of them because they're legends, right? Like you can't say no to like, you can't say bye to certain guys. You, I mean, you just can't, right? And Roy said, you know, I've done my, I do, I've done what I've done at the highest level. I'm just not fit for the job. And, I, and and to be honest with you, I I love that. Kind of went on his own terms. He kind of surprised some people, but he didn't feel like he was right. And it's okay. And like I said, I think it's okay. Um, a lot of these guys. Danny Green said he's like a father figure. A lot of these guys, you know, he became a man while he was there. He, was, he, he impacted so many lives. And being a college coach, man, it's more than just being a coach. Like these kids, some of these kids are coming from high school where they didn't, they really didn't have much, right? Uh, they were uh, come from na- tough backgrounds, tough situations. Uh, you know, you, you you get a high school kid, and you're basically you're basically getting, like I said, you're, it's a high school kid. You're getting a kid. You get a 17 year old kid. Uh, you're talking to them when they're 15, 16 year old. And college is one of those times in your life where you really grow up. You make some mistakes. Uh, you make some. It's your. I always say it's the biggest four years of almost your life. You want to say. Grow up. You turn into a different person. Kind of maturing. And these coaches are like I said, they're more than just coaches. They're father figures. Sometimes a lot of these kids coming into college, they don't really have. You know, sometimes some of them they don't have families. So you've got to be that dad. You've got to be a coach on and off the floor. You know, in the NBA, it's more a little bit more of a business. Uh, you, you're, you're employed by these guys. And not to say, you know, college basketball really isn't because the NCAA is... Should I, get going, should I get going on the NCAA? Uh, you know, I'm not going to get going on them right now. Are they a little corrupt? Hey, maybe. But these coaches, they have to, you know, almost mature these men. Make them into young, good men. Because the percentage of guys going to the NBA is what? On every basketball team, maybe. See, people always ask me about this, right? 
They're like, oh, they, they, can he play in the NBA? I'm like, no. No. Um, you know, like, he's six five. you know? I, 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 so it's like maybe one on every team, two at most, right? Not many. Unless you're Kentucky, then you got just dudes. But, or like, you know, Duke. But like, on any regular team, maybe one, maybe two, maybe. Yeah, I'm talking big maybes. We're talking pros. Like last night in the basketball game, in the Baylor-Gonzaga game, how many pros were there, really? Two, maybe? Three? Four? I don't know. Like, the Suggs is going to be a legitimate guard in the NBA. Yeah, you know. But I'm getting away off topic. But these guys, they've, you know, not all of them are going to play in the NBA, so you've got to set them up for life. They go get a, they go get a, a degree. Uh, some of them move on to jobs, right? Start families. Some of them don't know how to be dads because they didn't have that father figure. That's what Roy Williams. That's what Coach A, Coach Beheim, all these guys. That's what they are. They're, they're they're setting these men up. So Coach Roy Williams deserves all the credit in the entire world. Um, I love it. Um, like I said, I'm glad he, I, I, I wish more guys did this. I, I really do. I really do wish more people did this. More coaches did this. Cause sometimes you feel like, ah, oh, they're, they're like, you don't want to push them out. They're legends. You, you know, they're legends. And, uh, coach Roy, man, he, he, he did a great job over at North Carolina. I hope he's in good health. I hope he's in good spirits. And they just hired another coach who, he signed off on really heavily. He was a long time assistant for them. Um, so they'll be good. They'll, they'll be good. He played under Roy. He played under Roy, uh, for all those years. Um, Hubbard Davis, he's, you know, played in the NBA for 12 years, a uh, good leader of men, uh, because that's what you look for. in you know, in coaches, good leaders of men, good le- leaders of young women, of women, um, it's gotta be great leaders. They wear so many hats. And, uh, you know, sometimes coaches, sometimes the first one to go when something goes bad and, you know, college coaches is recruiting, uh, you're coaching uh, a lot of, you know, different type of backgrounds. You're coming into it. Um, so you wear a lot of hats as a, as a, as a college coach, I think. And, uh, coach Roy Williams deserves all the respect in the world. Good for him. 70 years old. Um, ha- have a good retirement coach. Uh, basketball Hall of Fame in 2007. So he's a legend. He's a legend. Uh, now let's get over the NBA. Let's talk a little bit of NBA. I've been talking a lot about college basketball, and I'll get. I have another segment coming up about college basketball and pros. Um, I always have this. This discussion always comes up when I watch with people. Uh, they, a lot of people ask me like how many pros. Actually, I'll have this now. I could talk about it now. Uh, so a lot of people ask me like. Hey, what do you? Th- how do you think he fits in the pros? I'm just like, who? Yeah, I'm, I, uh... Like Timmy, for instance, last night. You know, he's a good ball player. Um, but what position does he play? Is he a four or a five? He's six ten. Like you realize, like, is he guarding like Gobert? Like, is he guarding? Porzingis? Like, is he guarding Anthony Davis? Is he guarding Giannis? I mean, he's considered a big man, right? So, and I have these, I, I, and I, and I, and I talked about this a little bit earlier. Maybe on every team, there's maybe one, maybe two, no, not even two legitimate, you know, centers or centers, players. Suggs, I think, is going to be a stud. I, I love Suggs' game. He's cr- freaky athletic, good player. Uh, he's got a lot of things that translate to the game. Like Mitchell last night for the Baylor, I think his game translates completely. Like he's So in the NBA, you play roles. You're you're good in your role, right? Like, like you have to – Kyle Kuzma's always been – Kyle Kuzma's my big uh, – my big comparison, I'd like to do a lot of comparisons, comparisons with Kyle Kuzma because I watch him on a daily basis. I see how his game's kind of evolved. And people tell me, like, like, dude, he's better than Kuzma. I'm like, I don't know because Kuzma's game has evolved. Kuzma could be a bad scorer, 
or, or an amazing score on a bad team. And it took him some time to get used to Like, he's on a good team now. And it took him a while to kind of figure out his role. But you've got to be, I, I was hearing Rajah Bell talk the other day uh, on the Bill Simmons podcast. And he said, a lot of these kids come into the NBA trying to be like scorers, trying to be like dudes, trying to be that guy. Like, that's not your role in the NBA. Like, you have Harden, you have Luka, you have these top guys on teams like Beal, you have Lillard. Like, you're not going to be that guy. Another guy that comes into my mind that, like, plays his role, like, absolutely perfect. Are, there's two guys that come to my head. Alex Caruso and Josh Hart. Like, they play their roles so well. Like, they don't get out of that. Raja Bell talked a little bit about it. He's like, you know, when I was on a bad team, I they wanted me to get 20 points, 25 points on a nightly basis. I could do that. But out of 10 games, I'm probably going to do that maybe like four times, five times maybe. And the next five times, like we're going to lose bad because I'm not going to be able to do that. And so when he went to a good team like the Suns with Steve Nash and all these guys, Amari Sotomayor, they needed him to be a star in his role. And that's what he was. He was a not lockdown defender. Uh, he played his role. Scrappy. Uh, maybe he said eight to ten points a game. I could do that. So... A lot of these guys coming into the next level is like, you're not going to be that guy in the NBA anymore. You're just not. The best way I like to describe it is these guys are dudes. These guys are ballers. Like, it's the best 300 men to do it. And then I saw another thing that I want to mention. Bradley Beal has a, has his travel ball team. And this is one of the greatest things I've personally ever seen. Like, Bradley Beal... He had this, like, there was a minute clip where his travel ball team wasn't really buying into the system. They were all trying to, like, go crazy and score all these points. And none of them were playing their their role. They were all kind of just doing whatever they wanted to do. And Bradley Beals pulls his team to the side and is like, guys, what are we doing? Like, are we just trying to be, like, individual guys? Like, this doesn't roll in the next level. Like, you're getting paid. At one point, he said, guys will... Teams will literally give you money to leave. Like, you know, pack your bags, you're gone. They'll cut you. You're gone. They'll buy you. They'll literally pay you to be like, you know what? Don't play with us anymore. Don't play for us anymore. He said that. Right? And it's a business up there, but boys. It's a business. Right? You either play in your role, they you got these stars, obviously, and then you got guys that are just, you know, stars in their own in their own roles. These guys are all good. It's four hundred dudes, he said. And then you got to play against me, and none of you guys, none of you guys can guard me. He said, "I promise you, none of you guys are locking me up. I promise you, none of you guys can score on me either." And he's and he's absolutely right. And it goes back to the coaching and them kind of like maturing you into a, something that you want to be, right? Coaching you into a player that you know, because you're not going to be that guy. You're not going to be that guy in the pros. You're just not. Uh. I, I think it's. I think it was awesome. If you that, if you guys see that quote, go check it out. Go check out that little clip, clip of uh, of Bradley Beal. He's like, you guys can't guard me. You like none of you guys can. He's like, I could retire right now and go live on the beach, and my my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister are gonna be are gonna be okay. Because you're not taking his lettuce. You're not. But what I mean about lettuce is money. You're not taking that man's lettuce. You're gonna have to lock him up. And I'll tell you what, not a lot of people can lock up Bradley Beal. Not in the NBA, they can slow him down. Dude could erupt for 20, 25 and a quarter. That's how much you guys are scoring in a game. This guy's scoring in a quarter. So, when people ask me that question, is like, you know, like, this guy's going to be a good pro. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I Because I, I don't. Like... I, I could see why he could be good, but if he could be, he's not going to be that scorer he is. He's not going to be that dominant. Right? Like, he's just not. Yeah, it takes time to be good. You're not going to just walk into the NBA and all that automatically be a bucket. You'll be able to score, but, you know, you got to play against dudes every night. There's no really no off nights. Even these bad teams, still going to lock you up. Right? So. It's always fun, you know, for people to, when people ask me, like, hey, what do you think about this guy? Eh, he'll be a solid bro, I guess, but 
nothing more. He's not going to be second like make an all star team. And then I have a little problem with that kid from Illinois winning the point guard of the year over Suggs. He declared for the NBA today. Um, good for him, though, you know. Uh, best point guard in the league. I still think Suggs is the best one. Best point guard in the league. And I think his game actually translates to the NBA really well. Really, really well. So I've got... Uh, uh, I want to look over my bracket with you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry if you put money on the bracket that I that I gave you guys. I uh, I'll shoot me a Venmo. I'll send it back over to you. Um, but I told you guys I, I liked. Uh, I liked. I really did like uh, Arkansas. Um, I liked Ohio State a little bit too much. Uh, I liked Gonzaga, Oklahoma State. Uh, and for myself, I didn't have my Pac-12 teams in there as as far as uh, I had USC, but UCLA I didn't see that coming. I didn't. I thought Florida State was a better team. Uh, Michigan, uh, it was fun though. It was a good year. Houston was a good ball club. Uh, I thought Oklahoma State was going to go a little bit farther. Uh, Oregon State, you know, I didn't have Oregon State. I had Oregon State winning, but you know, Illinois I had them going a little bit farther. That Illinois was going to give me a better fight. Uh, but man, it, it was a fun year. It was a weird year. You know, I always say that it's a weird year. Not many fans, uh, not the craziness of March Madness, but we had some good games. I thought the women's side was a little bit better, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you that, and that championship game was really boring. I thought and Zaga didn't show up. Uh, Baylor showed up to play. I think it was fun to watch Baylor kick their butt just because it was an old fashioned whoop can of whoop ass as they like to call it. Uh, and Zaga just didn't show up to play. And I apologize for you guys, for you guys, the people that I had winning, that had Gonzaga winning. Shout out Baylor though; they they deserve a lot of credit. Uh, they do. Fun year in the March Madness again. I wanted to, that was a good year. Uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna just stick around. We're gonna get into the All NBA now. Uh, I talked a little March Madness on my first two shows. Uh, we're gonna talk NBA, full NBA. We've got a lot of injuries to get to. We've got a lot. We got some more pickups that we've had. Uh, so stick around. We'll be right back after this break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. back to the show ladies and gentlemen uh let's get into a little bit of nba talk we talked march madness we talked uh, coach barnes getting me fired up having to apologize to these people which is absolutely terrible um but let's get into this nba talk there's a lot of headlines this week uh there's some good headlines this week unfortunately we have some injuries that i i gave you guys my reasoning for james harden being my mvp and and unfortunately he's hurt now uh it's hamstring and that's a hamstring hamstring injuries are scary just because they're just like these injuries that linger and this kind of don't go away. And the only way to really, you know, get a hamstring right is like time off, you know, and it's not playing on it, staying off of it. Uh, it's, I, I hate injuries obviously, but it's a part of sports. It's part of the sports world, uh, what comes with it. But what this does for the, for the, what am I trying to say? For the Brooklyn Nets is we're going to see, and it, obviously he was my MVP and he's going to be reevaluated in 10 days. I saw uh, what this does though for the Nets is it looks like uh, Kim Rant's going to be back on Wednesday, which is cool. Uh, or Thursday, I want to say, 
which is good for the Nets. So we'll see how, uh, because like I said, I don't trust Kyrie to run this ball club. I really don't. Uh, the Nets beat the Knicks last night, and obviously Kyrie kind of took over though, right? He had 40 points, two rebounds, and seven assists. He kind of took the reins. Uh, he's been, you know, he had a hell of a play, man. He had this move where he went up with his right hand and then came back down and shot it with his left. Uh, crazy finish, uh, hell of a finish. Uh, like he's one of the most talented guys, and that's not. I've never knocked him for not being talented. I knock him for not being like a reliable guy, you know. Uh, but he's back, and uh, they all have Kevin Durant to to go at it with. Uh, that's exciting news. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then we had. If I hope a lot of you guys watched that game, there was. It was it was a cool moment because uh, it wasn't cool, but it obviously means a lot to these kids. And Julius Randle's son, it, it was a cool, cool clip. You got, I'd want you guys to go check it out. Uh, he's run, he's walking into this arena with his dad or, or with his mom. I'm sorry, and he's crying. And uh, it's obviously it. You know what it mean? You know what it means to him. You know if he's crying, you know what it meant for. Uh, Julius, that was a funny moment, or not funny, but like it was a cool moment. Check it out. Uh, it's it, it was nice to see that you know that his son is actually carrying. I mean, he he can't be over three to four years old. I don't know how old the kid is, but it was it was cool to see. Uh, guys, we also have last night the the Mavericks played. The Mavericks are. I told you guys. The Mavs are a scary good team. They're getting, they're finally healthy. I've said it a, a hundred times. Luca's finally getting healthy. Uh, they've won. Oh my god! They beat the Utah Jazz, which is probably the top, one of the top teams, you know. And I call them my pretenders this year. Uh, they're a fun team to watch. Uh, but the Mavs, man, the Mavs are looking good. No Porzingis either. Porzingis was hurt again. Uh. Luca, 31 points. Finney Smith, who I love. He's one of these guys that's like a role player. As I talked about it on the show earlier. He's like a star in his role. 23 points. Um, Jace, uh, Richardson, 17 points. Tim Hardaway Jr., 16. And then Jalen Brunson. Uh, he was part of the reason why I think they got rid of uh, Seth Curry. Uh, I think that was part of the thing that uh, I thought they were going to be. They, I thought they were going to miss him a lot. And I, you can never have too many shooters on a team. And they let him go, and but I think and now it's kind of started making sense. Maybe for Brunson to get more minutes, and Brunson has stepped up for them big time. Uh, he's a tough guy. He's a Villanova guy. Uh, he knows how to play. He's a winner. Uh, he's coached well. Uh, this is like a hard nosed guy that knows how to play the game of basketball the right way. Uh, d- doesn't really, you know, complain much. Uh, Mitchell had 16 last night. He struggled a little bit. Six for 23. Uh, Mike Conley, eight for 13. Str- uh, you know, that's not a bad night. Tw- 28 points. He led the team. Uh, and Jordan Clarkson had 16 points and uh, in 22 minutes of play. But the Dallas Mavericks guys, look out. They're coming out of nowhere. They could, I told you guys, Luka Magic is Luka. Luka is special. And I've, t- I've tried to tell you guys this. Uh, and you guys know. I don't have to tell anybody how good Luka is. Luka is Luka. Um Good, good basketball player, and I, I, you know, my one of my guys. Uh, another exciting uh, day that we had D'Angelo Russell. So, D'Angelo Russell. Oh man, how do I talk? How do I say? What do like? What is there really to say to D'Angelo Russell? Is he like? So I like D'Angelo Russell. I liked him with the Lakers coming out of Ohio State. I thought he was good, but what's like? He got paid all this money, right? They beat the Kings. Like, what is D'Angelo? Like, how good can the T-Wolves actually be? So, my assessment on them is how healthy can they be? Obviously, that's the number one thing. Always going into any year is how healthy can a team be, right? That's we always look at health, right? Health is a big thing. So, D'Angelo Russell wasn't healthy. Carl Anthony Towns, you know, he had a, that all the COVID scares. And then, and, and then Anthony Edwards. How good can they be? So Anthony Edwards is, seems to be legit, right? He's going to be able to play in this league. He's going to have a long career. 19 points, 5 or 15. And I said, he the door is open for him now to win Rookie of the Year. I want that door to be open. I want people to hear about it. But he's got to be more consistent, right? That's kind of his knock is he shoots a lot. Uh, 
and he sometimes he has bad nights, but that's okay. He's young. It's okay. He's young, right? Um, but how good can the T Wolves be? Because Carl Anthony Towns is obviously a top guy in the league. D'Angelo Russell is one of those guys that really doesn't. I, they, does he is he a star? No. Is he an all star? He's like right below that, I want to say, but he's like a scorer. But like, is he a point guard? He came off the bench last night, and scored twenty five. He's a guy that's a bucket though. Like, you always know he's gonna be able to score. He's always been able to score at you know any level. He can get to the basket. But the thing about him is, can he get guys involved? Because he's a point guard, obviously. He had three assists last night, which is you know. Uh, but they need their guy, right? Uh, they're gonna need their guy. They're gonna need like. A super. They had their guy like in Jimmy Butler, who was a leader, and I don't think Carl Anthony Towns is quite yet the leader. Uh, I don't know if Anthony Edwards is quite yet a leader either. And they're all like a bunch of dudes, and I feel like they could almost be like the Utah Jazz that have a lot of good pieces, but not have that star, you know, that puts them over the top. Like who's closing the game out for them? Is it Anthony Edwards? Like is it Carl Anthony? Is it D'Angelo? And you see a lot of these teams that are like that. Like the Knicks are like that, right? They're like. Can they eventually have like a star? Because every team needs a star. Because we got a bunch of role guys, and a bunch of role guys usually don't. They win a lot of regular season games, but down the stretch in the playoffs, you need a guy. You need your horse, right? Uh, you need like every team has that guy, right? So like Jimmy Butler, like I said, the Lakers, they have Anthony Davis or LeBron James, who's obviously their leader. The Clippers, like Paul George or you know Kawhi Leonard, could be like. They still don't kind of know who their guy is, but all these teams, like for the Warriors back in the day, that Steph or or or, or uh, Kevin Durant, right? The Knicks or the the Brooklyn Nets, James Harden, right? Kevin Durant, like you need that guy. So, what can Minnesota ideally do? Is maybe in the off season kind of get somebody? They're in the same kind of in the same boat. They could be good. They've got these pieces that are great pieces, but they need that one guy to get you over the top. And to go back to D'Angelo Russell, like, does he make this team better? Is he, is he going to take shots away from uh, Anthony Edwards? Like, is he going to take shots away from Carl Anthony Towns? Like, what's his ultimate, like, what is he ultimately going to do is my thing. How are they going to fit that in? Because to be honest with you, has D'Angelo kind of fit anywhere? He's gone? You know, it's, I don't know. And I can't really answer that. I just don't know. Uh, the Phoenix Suns beat the Houston Rockets last night, one thirty three to one thirty. Uh, Houston looked good, man, and uh, unfortunately, Devin Booker went on a tear of his own. He went on his own little streak and called game. He said, "Enough of this malarkey. I'm taking the game over, and we're winning." It's basically what he said. It came down, it came to him winning it. Detroit beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, so I was asked a question, what, so going back to the Phoenix Suns, like the Phoenix Suns, right? Are they this bubble team from last year or are they like legitimate contenders? Can the Phoenix Suns legitimately win a championship? And I said, no, right? Uh, essentially they're the same team as the bubble team last year. Obviously they went nine and zero in the bubble and they had Chris Paul and I think they, they makes them a better team, right? Uh, but I think they're a threat. They're a threat. And it all comes down to health. And they've stayed healthy for the most part. Uh, but I, I, I just, you know, they're like they're one of those teams that's maybe like a piece away, right? And a piece away is, you know, a lot to me. But they're doing well, right? They look good. Uh, Chris Paul's added a different dimension. Like, that's a leader, right? So, like, that's kind of what I mean, right? So, we have... The, the Timberwolves, that they have all these young, good players, right? But they don't have that guy. And, like, Chris Paul ended up being that guy for the Phoenix Suns. He he takes over late game. Uh, he takes pressure off Devin Booker, Aiden, and he kind of does his thing, right? And that's he's a leader. And the, the, the Minnesota Timberwolves don't really have a leader, right? Do the Knicks really have a certified leader? Right? That's kind of what... A lot of these teams look for is a leader. Um, and yeah, that's what kind of I'm basing off of my, what I'm looking at, right? So, and the the Phoenix Suns, with, with all due respect, 35 and 14. 
That's a good ball club. It's a really good ball club. Uh, it's a good team. Good team. Good team. And then we had um, Toronto beat the Washington Wizards 103 to 101. Uh, and then Detroit beat Oklahoma City 132 to 108. And then Cleveland beat the San Antonio Spurs 125 to 101. So let's look at the standings here. I want to look at the standings. So in the East, we have Brooklyn. Brooklyn's taking over the first seed. Uh, Philadelphia's dropped down to two. Milwaukee, three. Atlanta, four. Miami, five. Charlotte, six. And then Boston, seven. And then Knicks, eight. Um, so what it's looking like the playing games will be from seven to eight, seven. Um, and the, the Celtics could lose, honestly. They could, and obviously they'll be shuffling because f- the fourth seed is 26 and 24, and then the eighth seed is 25 and 26. So it's only a game separation off of them, a game and a half separation. So there's not much separation. So there'll be movement, uh, coming down the stretch here. And, uh, there'll be some, there'll just be movement. And in the West, we see, uh, the Jazz who have stayed in first place. Uh, Suns, Clip, the Suns at second. Clippers, who've been playing really well as of late, kind of 33 and 18, blew out the Lakers on Sunday. The Nuggets, 31, 31 and 18 in the four. And then the Lakers at the fifth seed, who are dropping and dropping and dropping. They need to get healthy. They've got to figure it out, uh, you know, kind of stay above water. Uh, you don't want to get into those playing games, really. Portland, a six seed. Uh, Dallas, a seven seed. And then the Grizzlies, an eight seed. Uh, so the Lakers are about three games away from that, uh, three games from that seven seed that no one really, you don't want to play in that. You just really don't. Cause anybody, you know, you, you'd rather play a four game series with somebody, uh, my personal opinion. Uh, but a lot of these teams got it. And the Lakers had a Ben McElmore today. I like that pick up a lot for them. Uh, he's a guy that could, has, Rejuvenized his career in the Rockets, and he played a great role when when the Rockets were going up to the championships and all that good stuff. They were not to the championships, to the playoffs. They were playing really well. Uh, he did a lot for them. He stretched the floor for uh, James Harden and uh, Russell Westbrook and all those guys. He was a spot up guy. If he gives them the Lakers ten to twelve minutes a game, knocks down a couple threes because the Lakers are one of the worst teams in the NBA at shooting the three ball right now. Uh, they just don't have many guys that could shoot three. Caldwell Pope is having, I think, a bad year, to be personally honest with you. Uh, ben McElmore helps there. And the Clippers actually just signed Boogie Cousins, right? And I love Boogie Cousins, and I think they need help uh, at the center position, even though I think Ivica Zubats is one of the most uh, underrated players in the NBA. Uh He's a good point. He's a good uh, center. He, I think he really is. Uh, the, you know, but I think they need some depth there. I think their second guy in line is, man, who is it? Ibaka's hurt. Ibaka's been hurt for a while. And uh, who else? I'm trying to think of their center. They don't. Do they not have another center? So they had Boogie Cousins for another ten day. They are going to sign him to a ten day contract and see how that works out. Boogie's apparently been working out, playing well, uh, in good shape. So that'll be nice to see Boogie getting another opportunity as he he's had a tough he he's had a tough situation the last couple of years with you know his Achilles and then he tore his ACL and then he looked promising he looked ready to go and then it, that fell off so good for Boogie getting another opportunity with the Clippers uh, the Lakers Ben McAmore I like that pickup a lot for the Lakers just stretch the floor out um, to make that kind of make that run Portland's getting healthy getting healthier. Uh, last night we had a cool moment though. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. hit a buzzer beater, uh, and I and I want to talk a little bit about flopping uh, in late, in, especially late in games. So Gary Trent dribbled the ball up right, and he he drove down the court, and one of the 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 Wizards guy kind of flopped, kind of threw himself back. And do you, what what do I think about that? Like, what's the deal with with like flopping at the end of games. So my thing is at the end of games, you don't want to put the, you don't, so refs don't want to make that call. First of all, like refs don't are going to bite their whistle. We've seen it with the Baylor. Uh, was it the Baylor women or no? Yeah. The Baylor women that they didn't, they, they kind of bit their whistle. Uh, we saw it 
with uh, we've seen it all. We've seen it in March Madness a lot. We, then we saw it in the NBA last night. You don't want. You kind of just don't want to put it in the refs' hands because they like to bite their whistle late. So kind of for me, my best instance that I feel like is play it out. You know, you don't obviously don't want to foul him. You don't want to put a guy at the free throw line, but like play it out. Like don't put it in the refs' hands. Uh, almost like stay back, play a little bit better defense, and contest the shot. Uh, Pop, Coach Pop said a contested shot's always uh better. Um, chances go down right in him making it instead of him flopping. Gary Trent kind of just walks into the shot. Um, you know, and I, it's a bummer. To, I, it, I. Like I said, I don't want you to. Uh, I, I don't like the flop. I don't like the flop. I just don't. Not, especially not late in games. Especially you know, especially late in games. You don't want to put that in uh, ref's hands. Another cool story that I want to talk about is Isaiah Thomas back in the NBA. Isaiah Thomas is a guy that has not been the same ever since he's left the clip or the. Ever since he left the Celtics, the Celtics obviously did him a little dirty. Uh, but it's a business at the end of the day. It's kind of everyone, every man for themselves. Like what is going to, you know, what what do we see? Uh, every man for themselves. And Isaiah Thomas just got a shot uh, with the Pelicans. And I I like Isaiah Thomas. He's obviously the last pick in the, in the draft that he'll never forget. Uh, underrated guy. He wanted a lot of money. And it, unfortunately, he got hurt. Uh, and we never really saw, he never really hasn't been back. I know he got a 10 day with the Denver Nuggets last year. That didn't work out. And I playing for the Lakers. That didn't work out. He played for the Cavs. They traded him. Uh, but he says he's still got some more left in the tank. He's, uh, 102% after his recover, his hip injury, uh, surgery. I'm sorry. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I hope he, I hope he does nothing but the best for them that, you know, the Pelicans are, Kind of on the outside looking in right now, uh, but he could help them. He's a young, he's he's an older guy. I could give him a boost. He could score if he could still. If he still he, he's one of those guys that was always a bucket. He could put the ball in the basket at any given moment. He could erupt at any moment. But this is obviously young Isaiah Thomas, and we'll see what he is now, um, how he looks, because he's missed a lot of time and a slow grind. I follow him a lot on on all of my social media platforms. I've been a fan of him. He's kind of got that underdog mentality, little guy, uh, bulldog, kind of doesn't take no for an answer. Um, and he's one of those guys that could just, like I said, fill it up at any given moment, but he's older now. So I'm glad the Pelicans gave him a shot to see what he's got, you know, some of these. But the thing that also a lot of these teams need like a veteran. And obviously uh, that's kind of like a lost thing now. Back in the day, you used to see that a lot. Every team kind of had a vet, right? And now you don't see that as much, right? The Lakers still have it in Jared Dudley. Uh, but a lot of these guys are getting caught. Like uh, Crawford kind of got ran out of the league because he's, you know, a little bit older. And he could he could help a team, though, you know? Like Vince Carter a couple years ago. I think he, he retired on his own. But I think every team could do well with a veteran to just kind of help guide the young guys for the most part, as I think, you know? Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I've got some uh, interesting stuff to come up here a little bit later. Uh, we're going to talk, uh, close out, close the book on a March Madness and close uh, and look forward to some NBA games this week. We'll be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. How we doing, ladies and gentlemen? I'm back uh, for the final segment of this show, and this is probably one of my favorite segments that I'm about to dive into, and I am very passionate about this. I'm very, uh, I'm very, uh, so I'm very strong on this opinion. So, if I'm a high school kid, and I want to go play in the NBA eventually, right, what do I do? 
Do I go to college or do I go to the G League? Do I go to overseas? What do I do? A little segue, uh, the Lakers have hit nine threes in the first quarter. But here we go. What do you do if you're a high school kid? You're a top kid. Okay, let's say I'm a top kid in Southern California. I got offers from Kentucky, Duke, uh, Gonzaga, uh, what else? Kansas. Just all the top dogs, right? North Carolina, you name it, right? And then I'm a kid that has offers to some mid-majors, right? Some small schools, the Daytons, right? Uh, Just Oral Roberts, right? Schools like that. What do we do? So we're seeing some kids go overseas, right? We're seeing some kids go overseas and play. And to make a little bit of money, because sometimes financially, you never, I don't like to talk about people's lettuce. I don't, I don't talk about people's lettuce. I don't talk about people's money. I don't count pockets. But what's the right thing to do? And there's obviously a lot of people that argue with, you know, you go overseas, you play against pros, uh, you're playing against grown men. In college, you're playing against guys that, like I said earlier, maybe one or two of them might play in the NBA. Uh, You have better competition overseas. Uh, You get paid overseas. And in college, you don't see any money. And I agree with all that. Like I said, I don't like to count people's money. Uh, Some team in Australia could give you X amount of dollars. Some team in anywhere could give you some money, right? You're the G League now. It's a new thing. The G League, you know, they're they're kind of expanding, giving you a way out. Uh, Because I've always said the NCAA is the most corrupt business. One of the most corrupt businesses in the, you know. But... The, the thing about the NCAA that, that I want kids that I, you know, if, if if anybody ever asked me like, yo, what do you think? Go to college. Go to, be there for 30 minutes. Go be there for a year. Maybe you need to be there for two. And four isn't bad either. You get a degree. You get to play basketball. And the thing about it is, you know, I, I had a segment on it being the Pac-12. Sometimes it's, it's too late. P- people are asleep. What makes you think all these people are going to stay up and watch you in Europe? What makes you think they're going to stay up all night and watch you in Australia? The more eyes you have on you, I think the better. Uh, the more eyes you put on a kid, uh, uh, let's say like uh, if you're in the SEC, you play on Saturday afternoons. You play on Thursday afternoons on ESPN. You're playing on Fox. You're playing on CBS on Saturday mornings. You're just on TV more. More people watch you. Scouts, and I, and I know it's a scout's job to find guys, but it's like everything. You know, obviously, scouts go out of their way to find guys. That I get that. You know, they're going to stay up late at night to watch this kid. They're going to wake up early in the morning to watch this kid. But if you play in college, more people could watch you. I feel like you, you get more eyes and more exposure. That's that's kind of my thing. But now, does the NBA, the, does the NCAA have to do something about it? A hundred percent. Because a full scholarship is not enough. Call me crazy. Call me whatever you want to call me. A full scholarship is not enough for these kids. It's not. I'll, t- I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll I'll argue this against anybody. You send me anybody, I'll give you my tags. Eddie Garcia, look me up. We'll talk about it. It's not enough. These kids, these programs are making millions and millions of dollars. The NCAA is making billions of dollars off of these kids. And I get it. I get it. What does a water polo kid get? Well, you know water polo player? Get some eyes on you. And I sometimes it's got to be a little bit harsher than things. But college basketball players and college football players have to be compensated. Women's, men's, you name it. Um, they've got to find they've got to find a balance. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. But the NCAA's got to find a way. Because these kids got to go to college. It's the best way. It's the best. It's not the best way for you to get drafted. But like I said, it's more people watching. More exposure. Uh, you have got you play on TV a lot. Uh, you, think about a kid that plays in the March Madness. No one really knows about him. 
Look at Steph Curry. No one knew. But, I mean, unless you were like a basketball head, a basketball junkie. He became a household name at Dayton. And now he's out here going to be the greatest shooter of all time. Uh, and obviously we saw with the ball. The ball brothers to me is a different thing. Them going overseas, right? Uh, they went overseas and so Lonzo went to UCLA for a year. Uh, and then his brothers went overseas because his brother got kicked out. And then it just kind of a domino effect. His, his brother played in Australia and all this. Yep. 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 Do you think if Lamelo went to Kentucky or something like that, or Duke or any of these schools, UCLA, he'd be the number one pick? Excuse me. I don't know, but he could have been. His eyes, people watching, and like I said, not that they're not watching overseas, but it's just different. It's just different. And now the G League's doing something, right, where I think they're paying a, paying a couple guys uh, uh, X amount of dollars. And, uh, <laughs> hey, the NBA, th- that that right there will change things up. If the NBA starts getting involved, look out. The NCAA is going to kind of be backed into a corner and kind of be like, nah, oh, nah, 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 the pressure's on, right? Uh, because if they start doing that, kids are going to be able to do that. The... the, the the TV networks will start picking up these games. The Foxes, the ESPNs of the world, and then he, and then, then college is gonna have a little bit of a, a little bit of you know, competition. Because you don't want all the top kids going to the G League, right? You want them in the college game. And obviously, there's fans that that, that like their colleges, uh, the alma, their alma maters, and all this good stuff. I'm a former D2 athlete, man. I get it. I, I obviously I play D2 ball, and it's a little bit different. But, you know, I hear you. I Trust me, I hear you. I'm a full scholarship guy and all this other stuff. But, you know, school's making some money. I am going to need, you know, I'm going to need a little bit more than my rent paid for and, you know, and, and a scholarly. And obviously I didn't go to Alabama. I didn't go to Texas. I didn't go to these big, you know, schools but say these kids that think about joey burrow last year at lsu right and i don't want to cross i don't want to cross but think about how much money he brought to that lsu program it's a lot of money we're talking uh, you know a lot of zeros at the end of things think about anthony davis how many how much money he brought to uh kentucky think about zion williams at duke And obviously, sometimes they get paid on the table. And sometimes that's what you got to do. Sometimes you got to get your lettuce right. Right? Uh, we're I don't know. We've got some good prospects coming on. That's going to kind of catapult me to my next. Uh, I'm looking at a top 50 pro, uh, prospects list here that I see. We've got the kid from Oral Roberts who I think made some noise because of, of the March Madness. Let's be real. Did anybody from Oral Roberts really... Did anybody know any players from Oral Roberts? Let's be real. Probably not. Your average guy is not going to know a kid from Oral Roberts. You're just not... You just don't know. That's what the March Madness will do to you. It'll put you on big boards. Oh, man. This kid could play. Oh, oh. He's scoring like that? Right? I mean, he, the kid. this kid was a leading scorer in the country. But still, they want to see you get some stiff competition. Oh, okay. He could blow by a kid that's probably going to be projected to go in the in the draft. Okay, let me write this kid's name down, right? Uh, the kid from UCLA, Johnny, the sophomore. He's an interesting product. I didn't realize he went to Kentucky his first couple years, and then uh, Chuzek, uh, Johnny Chuzang. I like the kid, baller, not afraid of the moment. You know, being in the tournament catapulted him. He had a good year, but the kid was scoring. Against everybody, Gonzaga, uh, kid who's a baller scoring against Michigan, taking over games, right? Uh, I think it'd be better if he get, gets a little bit bigger, maybe comes six around for a little bit longer. Uh, I, I, I personally, I think. Uh, Joel Ayaye, another kid that I see here from Gonzaga. The kid, his game translates. 
Um, the kid from Illinois, the junior AO, he just declared today uh, best point guard in the in the NCAA. Supposedly, I want to talk about that too. Is he the best point guard in the in the NCAA? No, but really, and I, I, I I'm, a, I'm like I said, I'm an NBA guy. I like my NBA guys. Suggs is the best point guard in the in that was in college basketball last year. He was the best point guard. You mean to tell me we put AO and Suggs, and you ask ten NBA executives or ten programs who you'd rather have on your team? Ten, nine times out of ten, a lot of them are going to say Suggs. Right? Kid's good. Don't I don't want to take anything away from him. Good ball player. I don't know. Uh, Brandon Boston, another Southern California kid from Kentucky. He's got to he's got to come back. Um, yeah, he he's a right now he's thirty two top prospect. He's not a second uh, maybe second rounder just because of his potential, but he's got to he's got to come back and uh, kind of improve his draft stock a little bit. I think. Uh, Chris Durante from Oregon, twenty five. I like that. I like that kid a lot. I think his game will translate. And I never really know what these like. Uh, I see Real Madrid on here. Uh, I love basketball, but uh, I haven't watched a kid from Real Madrid center. I haven't watched him. Uh, who else we got here? Let me look at my list. Uh, we got Chris P- Corey Kispert, the kid last night. He didn't step up in the big moment. Uh, All American. Kid from Gonzaga, he's a senior, he's gone. He'll be a solid piece, I think. Um uh, I like his game. I like the kid Trey Mann from from Florida a lot. I think a point guard. He's uh he's another one of those guys. He's another one of those guys that, hey, look out. He's better than that AO kid from Illinois. Moses Moody, Arkansas top. 12th prospect I'm seeing here out of Arkansas a kid was you know he kind of got slowed down at the end uh, but you know he's a good kid freshman Arkansas I love that Arkansas team I, you guys know how much I love that Arkansas and then 11 Davion Mitchell from Baylor big fan of his his game's going to translate so well in the NBA Um, like I said I love his game uh, it's just going to translate. The kid's a baller. I like his game a lot. I like his game. He, he kind of reminds me a little bit about that, that Loot Dort. Dort. I like Dort a lot. Um, and then the top five we got here. A kid from the G League. Two kids from the G League. That Jalen Green was a top prospect coming out. Jonathan Kuminga. Who came, another uh, G League kid. Uh, we didn't, I, I, like I said, I didn't have much time to see him. I, I, they didn't play in college. I, you know, Evan Mobley, obviously from UC, from USC, great kid. Uh, number three prospect, Jalen Suggs, and then Kate Cunningham out of Oklahoma state to round things up. So those are, you know, there's some legit, uh, prospects. Look out my guy from Oregon state though. Ethan Thompson, uh, look, look out for that name. He's one of those guys that could kind of play like a role, right? He's like a role player, and I and I, you could. He's a big kid. Uh, maybe he needs to put on a little bit more muscle, but uh, but yeah. So I'm looking at the so the draft order right now as it is. Uh, this was updated on April sixth. Today is April sixth. <laughs> And we have the, uh, I want to go through the top 10 picks. Let's see what the, uh, no, let's go through, let's go through most of the picks, right? So, so far from the top, let's do for one, let's start at one because that's obviously where it's going to, so they have, uh, the top kid they have is Kate Cunningham going to the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, the thing, so I talked about the Minnesota Timberwolves. They're an interesting team to me. Uh, like they need a star, and I don't know if Kate Cunningham is that. They need a guy that could, you know, close out games. 
I, 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 I don't know. It'd be a good piece, though. You add that to Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Don't be surprised if they trade uh, D'Angelo Russell again. Because Katie Cunningham, you know, kind of does the same thing. Because D'Angelo, D'Angelo, D'Angelo should be a point guard, but he doesn't really, I don't know. Doesn't really suit me as a point guard. Cade Cunningham going number one. Jalen Suggs going to the Rockets. Uh, I would love that for Steven Silas. Another kind of a piece to build around. Uh, he'd be going into kind of a little bit of a mess. Uh, but, yeah, Jalen Suggs at two. I love Jalen Suggs. He's a guy that is ready to play in the NBA tomorrow. Uh, I like his body. Big kid. Uh, 6'4", 205. Uh, plays downhill. Uh, good kid. I like I, I like watching him play. I thought he was the best point guard in the in the in college basketball last year. Uh, Detroit Pistons, Jalen Green. Obviously, the Pistons have some things to work on, but they you know they got Grant who they could build around. They've got uh they've got some good pieces down there. Um, Jalen Green, obviously transcending player, top kid coming out of the class last year. Uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, Ethan Evan Mobley. Uh, freshman kid uh, from USC, 16 points, 8 rebounds, 3 blocks, 7 footer, who could kind of do it all. Uh, dynamic center. Uh, but they got, they, uh, they have, uh, what's his name? Jared Allen, right? Jared Allen. Is that his name? Jared Allen? Poofy hair. They traded for, for the Brooklyn Nets and they obviously like him. So I don't know how that'll play out. Maybe want to play the five, want to play the four, because you know Mobley could step out. He could, he's an athletic big. Uh, Scotty Barnes, a kid from Florida State, going to Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic got to get they got a hit on a pick because they uh, they got all these big guys. Uh, Mo Bamba, eh. uh, that's the other kid, Jonathan Isaac, eh. uh, and then they got uh, who they get? The, who's the kid they got this year? They, they they've got a hit. They've got to start hitting on these picks. So they've they've had a lot of good picks and nothing has really turned out on them. Uh, the Washington Wizards, uh, the kid for that I, from the G League who I didn't really watch much, Jonathan Kaminga, but the uh, the hype is real around around him. Uh, he's a guard from probably fit really well. Toronto Raptors, Davion Mitchell. This is a kid I love the most in this draft, man. Davion Mitchell. Uh, he play defense on anybody. He could score. He's fast. He's a leader. Uh, uh, that's that's my guy. He's my steal of the draft, Mitchell. He, his game's gonna translate. I love his foot. I love his feet. Footwork. Uh, his feet work. His footwork. Uh, Toronto Raptors. That'd be a good piece. Kenyon Johnson of the Orlando Magic. Uh, kid from Tennessee, Oklahoma City. Moses Moody. That's a good piece. I like that. You know the Thunder. Uh, they know how to draft. They do. Uh, Jalen Johnson to go to the, and let me see other picks that I like where guys are going. Uh, Corey Kisper, the kid from Gonzaga, 18 points at Golden State Warriors. That'd be, I'd like that next to Clay and, uh, Steph Wiseman. Hopefully he ends up, you know, doing his thing comes along. That could be, I like that Corey Kisper, the Warriors. He'll rock with that. I just need to think he needs to get a little bit stronger because he's going to have to guard, guys. I uh, can knock him down, but he's going to have to guard. You have to guard in the NBA. Uh, let's see where, who else I like here. Zaire Williams, the New York Knicks. That, you know, there you go, Zaire. California kid. Sierra Canyon High School. Um, Who else? I'm looking at the draft. I'm just trying to pick out guys that... uh. We see here. Uh, BJ Boston, another kid from Sierra Canyon, a guard going to Brooklyn Nets. Uh, That kind of rounds it up, right? Uh, But yeah, there's a a lot of interesting prospects this year. It's been a weird year, like I said. Uh, March Madness, I I thought they did a hell of a job. Uh, Some of these kids are going to get jobs off of it, you know, and it's exciting to see. Uh, Exciting week coming up in the NBA. We've got the Lakers have, they're up like, I think they've scored 70 points. 68 points in the first half. That's uh, pretty, uh, that's fun. I have it on while I record. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll be back next week with some more shows. We've got so much NBA stuff to talk about. Um, grew the week in basketball. We're getting closer to the playoffs. Guys are getting, you know, it's getting tough. It's getting tough. 
Uh, We'll be back next week, guys. Thank you for joining me. Eddie Garcia, we're out. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program